Hello class, this is Professor Satterwhite, of course, and today we are going to talk about your literary analyses. So in our class, there are going to be several literary analyses that you'll perform, which you'll turn in at the, on the assigned due dates, hopefully. Uh, and uh, I wanted to discuss the format for these papers. I don't expect you to understand exactly how to do a literary analysis right away. Some of you will be better skilled with this than others, uh, but it's always helpful to talk about the writing process and what I'd like to see in these papers, especially before you turn in your first ones. So I thought I could work through a piece that you are familiar with. And if not, then we will uh, learn about this piece right now. All right, this uh, poem that we're gonna look at, we'll perform this poem. Uh, this literary analysis on the poem Facing It by Yusuf Komenyaka. All right, so I'm going to screen share the poem now, and I will have the author read along with this too. So give me one second. Okay. It's a very famous poem, often anthologized. You may have read this in a previous class, and if not, then this is uh, your first time reading this incredibly important poem. This poem is about the Vietnam War. It's about a veteran who's come back from the war and is at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, DC. If you've never been there, it's an incredibly moving experience to uh, not only to see the wall of names or 58, over 58,000 uh, Americans who were killed in the war. Uh, but then also you get to see the people that are coming up to see uh, the wall itself. Uh, we have a wall in Pensacola, which is a half size of the wall. It's uh, very impressive. It's also very moving. Uh, the experience is a little bit different though, just because in, in Washington, DC, you get to see so many other people experience this with you. So when you go to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Washington, DC, there's a rarely, uh, it's a rarely, uh, is it gonna be an empty experience? It, there'll almost always be people there. There'll always be people that are walking through, uh, looking at it. And quite often you'll see veterans of the war who are standing next to the wall. There's a number of uh, very famous images that people have done in the past where you see a painting of a man who's in a business suit standing next to the wall. His hand is up against the wall and he's whole, feeling the names uh, of the people that were killed. And then in the reflection, you see uh, the images of people that were in Vietnam uh, with him, uh, incredibly moving images. And again, if you haven't been there, it's worth seeing, it's worth uh, visiting. Uh, and what you could do with the wall as well is you can put your hand on it and you can feel the names. And this is part of the experience is uh, being able to touch the names and be able to feel uh, their names right beside their names as well. If you didn't know this, uh, there's a diamond shape uh, between most of the people. And if it's uh, a diamond shape, uh, then that means the person was killed in action. If there's a cross next to their names, uh, then that means that they were missing in action and their remains have not been recovered yet. Uh, and if their names or if their remains are ever recovered, they fill in the triangle with a uh, fill in the cross with a triangle and move them from missing in action to killed in action. Uh, and if they're found alive, then they circle the cross. Uh, to date, that's never happened, though. Uh, but they leave that option or that opportunity out there. Uh, back when the wall was initially created in the early 1980s, uh, this was a seeming uh, this is seemingly a possibility that might happen, but as the years go on, of course, uh, that becomes less of a uh, less of a possibility. At any rate, uh, this is the poem, and this is Yusef Komenyaka is facing it, and I will have the author read it. Thank you. 
It is very powerful piece and uh, it's nice to be able to hear uh, Yusuf Komenyaka read this. Uh, I will have him read this again because he's so generous and because this is a recording, <laughs> uh, but I'll have him read this again. Uh, when you're looking at a poem, uh, we'll talk about poetry first, but also with uh, shorter pieces as well. Longer pieces, you know, this rule still would apply, but it's just a little trickier to do. But with poems, there's no excuse not to. They say when you read a poem that uh, you look at it the first time uh, for the, uh, when you're trying to get the aesthetic approach, uh, you look at it the next time for a more efferent approach where you're uh, not only putting the efforts in, uh, spelled a little differently, but uh, where you're trying to get more of a critical reading. And the third time is when you're really reading the poem. Uh, and this is when you're dissecting the lines, you're dissecting the pieces of the work. So let's hear this poem again. All right, as you can hear in his voice, this is a very moving, uh, moving piece. And again, for those who've been to the wall, uh, who've been able to visit it, been able to see it, or been able to feel the, uh, the names, uh, it, uh, can, it can elicit a number of different experiences from the uh, people that are visiting, a number of different emotions. Uh, and what we're gonna do though, we're gonna analyze the poem itself. So in doing so, when you're looking at the literary analysis that we'll have for the class, we will have a prompt, uh, just like most of these uh, papers will have. They'll have a, a prompt. Now, what I'm looking for in these papers is gonna be a short piece. So this really should be about one page long, not more than that. And I'm looking for one solid paragraph. Uh, the reason that I like uh, doing this as one piece is because I find that you can get as much out of one single paragraph as you can an entire paper. And it has all of the elements that we need for a longer paper. And this could be able to work on a short focus sustained uh, piece uh, in, this, in this class as we build towards uh, a bigger work. And I get this you know, from uh, my colleagues, in particular, uh, Dr. David Balch, you know, but other colleagues you know, have also worked on similar pieces where you're working on short, uh, short 
uh, work, short writing exercises uh, to build uh, towards larger ones. Uh, so when you're beginning the piece, the first thing you need to do is hit, look at the pro or look at the prompt to be able to uh, probe it and to be able to examine what you need to find in the store in the piece itself. So I'll just throw out this one uh, prompt to you. So uh, let's see. In Yusuf Komenyaka's poem, facing it, he describes his flesh being close to stone. He also describes the moment when he approaches the wall as a time when he is trying not to cry, trying not to be emotional. Why does he describe his flesh as being stone and why is he trying not to be emotional? All right, so this is just a sample prompt for you. Now, the first thing that I would do is I would begin by trying to answer this prompt. So in doing so, then I have to go to the poem and I have to find the lines uh, for this. So let me do another screen share and I'll read this uh, to you as well. So the lines that I'm gonna work with are these ones. Quote, I said I wouldn't, damn it. No tears, I'm stone, I'm flesh. So I'm just gonna work with those lines right there. And from there, I'm gonna extract as much as possible uh, from this. So the first thing that I would do is I'd start with my own opening line. So my opening line for this poem uh, would be something to the effect of, in the poem facing it, Yusuf Komenyaka is describing his visit to the Vietnam veterans wall as an emotional experience in which his uh, stone, his flesh is as close as possible to stone, uh, which is a metaphor for, yeah, this, and I'll just leave that blank. I'll leave that up for you to describe. So if you notice in the initial line, what I'm doing is I'm creating a thesis statement. Uh, and in the thesis statement, a good thesis statement is not only gonna answer the prompt, but also tell why this is important, uh, why this is important for our understanding of the piece itself. Uh, I, was, I went to a conference a number of years ago, and it's one of my early academic conferences, uh, and I was surprised at the number of people, uh, folks from Ivy League universities, who started off their conference papers with this specific line. In this paper, I will do this. And while there's, uh, while there's uh, not necessarily a lot of sophistication in that, the benefit in doing something like this, something to that effect, is that you're coming right out and telling your audience what you're doing. And in a way, this is kind of what I want you to do with these pieces. Uh, I'd like for you to go for a little more sophisticated work, but what I don't want you to do is to back into the paper. I don't want you to write something like, uh, Yusuf Komenyaka is a Vietnam veteran who suffered under the war. Uh, that might be obvious and that might be true, but this doesn't answer our prompt directly. Uh, what I want you to do is answer the prompt directly in that first sentence. Then from there, you could start to give a little background if you want, but it's maybe not necessary to do that. Uh, just enough to be able to tell whatever you're trying to uh, tell in this short piece, whatever you're trying to answer in this prompt. So in that instance, I would focus on the prompt and then I would make this a, a thesis statement. Remember, the thesis statement is going to be the main argument, uh, but I need you to explain why that's important. You know, as we say in, uh, in literary studies, the so what question. So tell me why this is important. So what? Why does it matter that he was in Vietnam uh, for this poem? It matters because it helps him to understand the conflict. Okay, so how does that help us? And you just continuously ask those questions. So what, so what, so what, until you get to that point uh, where you have a good thesis statement. All right, so from there, then I'm going to work with the text itself. You have to have the text in the poem. All right, the poem has to have, or the, I'm sorry, in the literary analysis, you have to have the text within there, whether it's a short story, a poem, whatever, you need to have the text in this piece. So in this one, I've used the quote, I said I wouldn't, damn it. No tears, I'm stone. I'm flesh, and this is the line. I said I wouldn't, damn it. No tears, I'm stone, I'm flesh. So in those lines right there, I have what I'm gonna work with. And that should be enough for me to work with, answer my prompt. So in doing so, I'm gonna begin this with the standard way that you're gonna use quotes in, uh, in literature, literary analyses. In this class and most likely just about everywhere else, you do the same thing, where you begin with an introduction to the quote. So you're gonna introduce the quote. From there, you're gonna integrate the quote into a sentence. Once you've integrated the quote into a sentence, 
then you cite it, and then you analyze it. And they'll all follow that formula. There might be a couple of exceptions, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any. That's generally how we do these. So you have the introduction to the quote, then you integrate the quote into a sentence, then you have the quote, then you have the citation, and then you're gonna do the analysis. And the analysis ideally will be twice as long as the quote itself. So if you have a really long quote and then you only have one other sentence after that, you're not really doing an analysis. All you're doing is just throwing a bunch of quotes in there. Uh, what you need to have is the analysis and the analysis has to go as deeply as possible into this piece. You're gonna pull as much as you can out of this to be able to, uh, to answer, your, answer your thesis, to make sure that your thesis question is being answered. So the prompt itself is being answered. Uh, so I'll show you what I've written right here. It says, a Vietnam veteran himself, Yusuf Komanyaka, describes a moving visit to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, DC. That's the introduction. Komanyaka writes, comma, quote, and you can also use a colon right there. Uh, I wouldn't, I said I wouldn't, damn it. No tears, I'm stone, I'm flesh. A citation, Komanyaka, 329, there's no comma between that too. A lot of people put those commas in there. Some citation methods do that in MLA, we do not. Uh, we're using MLA in this format, unless you talk to me and you want to use some other format. But if you do, then you have to be consistent throughout the rest of the class. So I prefer you just stick with MLA. So use this, Komenyaka, 329. And then the period goes at the end of the citation. This is also something that's important. Think of the citation as part of the sentence. Okay, it's not the beginning of the next sentence. It's not something that's sitting to the side, floating along. It's part of that sentence that you're trying to uh, trying to use. But it's also not part of the quote. So the quote uh, quotation mark would come at the end, and then after that, you would have the uh, the uh, citation. I don't have the quotation mark right here. I just noticed that and I'm trying to add it. See if I can. Yes, there you go. All right. Uh, and then the citation. And then after that, I have my analysis. In these lines, the poet describes his personal reaction to seeing the wall of names of those killed in the war. He survived the war, but the people on the wall did not. Nonetheless, he sees his reflection in the granite and recognizes his face among the names of the dead. In other words, he is both a living being who is literally and figuratively among the dead in this moment. So in that piece, what I'm doing is I'm trying to analyze what he said. So in that line in the beginning, I said I wouldn't, damn it, no tears. He's clearly emotional in here. So I describe this as a moving moment for him uh, and says that uh, no tears, I am stone, I'm flesh. Again, the wall itself is granite, so that part is evident. So how does he say that I'm part of this? How does he say that I'm part of the stone uh, that's part of the wall? And that's through his reflection being seen in the granite. So again, if you haven't seen it, uh, it might not uh, come clear, but I'm describing this to you now. Uh, and the, the, uh, the granite is very shiny and that you can see the reflection of him in the wall itself. Uh, but he's also seeing his reflection in the wall, but then seeing the names of the people that are there too. Uh, so again, he is among the living uh, with all the people that are around him, which he's describes in the rest of the poem, including himself. And then he is also among the dead as he's seeing the names uh, that are a part of this. If it helps you to do the analysis, the analysis is often one of the trickier parts of, of, the, of, the, of the piece are you actually analyzing the literature itself? Yeah, but it's also the heart of the, of the literary analysis as the name implies, uh, you're analyzing the literature. Uh, one trick that I learned in the past, and I use this quite often when I'm having trouble with this part myself, is I just use these words and I use the words in this piece right here. In other words, you know, in other words, what Komenyaka is saying is this. In other words, what the poet is saying is this, in other words, et cetera, et cetera. So by doing that, it helps me mentally to look at the poem and to be able to uh, expand on it. So I have myself asking this question, what is he saying in here? In other words, how do I describe this poem? In other words, how is he describing, how do I do an analysis of this work? Uh, and that's how I do this. So I use those words, in other words. There's a lot of other sophisticated, more sophisticated ways you could do this. 
those are great. I'd love for you to experiment with that, play with that. But what I want you to do absolutely is to use the analysis. Uh, to You need to be able to analyze uh, these works afterwards. If you have the quote and it's sitting there by itself, it's not gonna be a good piece. If you have uh, the quote and you don't introduce it, it's also not strong uh, because you're not given enough background to set up the quote. If your quote is sitting there by itself and there's no integration to the quote, then it's wrong uh, as well. So it's not correct when you do that. The quote needs to be integrated into a sentence. And by integrated the sentence, I said, Kuminyaka writes, comma, okay, that's the integration into a sentence. So it's part of that sentence. And of course you can go on longer and you can have a longer piece, uh, especially if you're using block quotes or anything like that. For shorter analyses, you should avoid block quotes. So just because it's a fairly short paper, as, uh, as you may know. Uh, but then from there, you know, I want to see uh, after the quote there in the citation, I want to see your mind at work. This is the purpose of the exercise. It's not to see if you can find a good quote. Uh, it's to see if you can analyze the piece. So by analyzing the piece, what you're doing is you're answering the, you're answering the prompt and then you're using the poem to help answer the prompt. And then you're beginning the analysis. And through this process, I get to see your mind at work. And that is the ultimate goal of this. This is what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to see your mind at work and see it work with literature. And all of the elements that you need for a long paper are all in this short paper. You have the thesis, strong thesis. And in this piece, you're gonna start off with that. First line is a strong thesis. Next, you're gonna talk about what you are, you're gonna write about what you are uh, what you're analyzing. So you have the integration, you have beginning, you have the integration of the quote, I'm sorry, the introduction uh, of the quote. Then you're going to have the integration of the quote, the quote, the citation, where we can find this. There's a number of different ways you can cite many things. I would urge you just to go with the easiest possible way. The one I described is one of the easiest ways to do this. Uh, you can look that stuff up though. Uh, it's easy enough to find. Uh, so you have the citation uh, and then the analysis. And that's going to be the most important part. I want to see your minds at work in these pieces. So I want to see your mind at work in this analysis. And then you can make your conclusion. So the conclusion should prove that you answered uh, the thesis. Uh, so in doing so, it's not the same thing as the thesis and not a rewording of that, but it's you proving that you, uh, you've done this uh, in the conclusion. So a fairly short piece. Again, one paragraph, easy enough to do, uh, but also it's tricky uh, to do. Remember, because this is a short paper, There's uh, that doesn't mean that you don't need to have a works cited page. You need to have a works cited page with this. Uh, and it should be standard MLA format, unless you talk to me otherwise. Uh, standard MLA format, and it needs to be, uh, everything needs to be correct on there. I'm a stickler for uh, citation, so make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, and then uh, it needs to follow the specification. So I'm uh, also a stickler with the word count, especially with short pieces. Uh, but pay attention to this because as a short paper, that means that it needs to be proofread. It needs to, uh, you need to pay a lot of attention because the shorter the paper it is, that means that my eyes can float over this paper a lot longer than I might with a longer paper. Things you might get away with in a longer paper are going to be harder to get away with in a shorter paper. And the idea is, again, to make you a stronger writer because uh, the way that you write in a shorter paper is going to be the way that you write in a longer paper. So we're going to build to this. We're going to make these uh, pieces stronger as we go throughout the class. But I figured that this would help you to become a better writer in the process uh, and also help you to become a critical thinker when you're looking at literature. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, holler, and I am more than happy to help you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.